This conference will now be recorded. So now, um, once again, welcome guys to the webinar. Here we'll be discussing about evaluation of machine learning algorithms on TPU, x86, and GPU. So I myself, Tom Jose, I am working as an application specialist at Marabliss Design, along with Deepak Shankar, who is the founder of Marabliss Design, will be the host for this webinar. So let us start the webinar with the purpose intended behind this webinar. So the design challenges in host-based and data center-based AI and ML-based processing. So, so what actually is going to happen in this newly introduced fields like the artificial intelligence and machine learning are quite new to the industry. So the reason, so if you look at the AI or ML, AI or ML applications, it can be grouped as reasoning, knowledge-based, planning, or communication based. So in reasoning, we'll, what we'll be dealing with will be the ability to solve problems through logical deductions. So for example, the financial asset management, autonomous weapon systems, games, and so on. And in the knowledge-based AI applications, we'll be dealing with the ability to present knowledge about the world, like financial market trading, purchase predictions, medical diagnostics, and all such sort of things. And another application will be on the planning area where we'll be dealing with inventory management, demand forecasting, predictive maintenance, and so on. And this one is one of the key applications of AI where it is the communication field. So here we'll be dealing with real-time translation of spoken and written languages, voice control, and AI assistance. So all these, uh, the Siri, the Google, uh, OK Google, and the Alexa, all those have now switched to AI, uh, artificial intelligence. So a lot, so what it does is like, when we are designing a tool or an application, we'll be have, we'll be, we we'll have to go for implementing an artificial intelligence product. We'll have to collect or go through a large chunk of data and analyze them thoroughly. And the next thing that we'll be having to do is selecting the right infrastructure both on the technology and the topology side. So what we like if when a customer comes up with the design, they'll be having a certain requirements set up. That will be the basic of the design. Like for example, like if uh, the purpose of designing a new model will be to achieve certain goals, like whether it be latency, throughput, or power requirement. So once we set the requirements, the next step will be to select the ways to attain achieve those results or like what hardware should be used, uh, what topology should be used, what arbitration algorithm should be used. So those those are the things that the customer have to select upon. And then the next step will be creating a virtual prototype using system level modeling. So how is, that is gonna help will be, that will be our first analysis on our design that we are sort to implement. So from the system level modeling, we'll be able to analyze on certain parameters like the processor speed, the arbitration, like uh, whether it should be round robin or whether it should be like a custom algorithm and see for ourselves the report and statistics and decide whether to implement or whether to go along with the um, predefined parameters. And then what we are gonna do is we are gonna experiment with different hardware te technology. So let's say we decided to integrate an FPGA and um, we found the result and like uh, if the results were not within the required constraints then we can vary the we can connect different hardware topologies and technologies and see how the result varies and sometimes a processor using a processor instead of a processor or a hardware architecture hardware hardware accelerator might give you a better result than using other devices and then Another consideration of this webinar is to use the benchmarks provided by different sources, like the Dawn benchmark from the Stanford, Stanford University, which we used here to obtain the inference and training time, which they collected by analyzing through different products from the different vendors, like Huawei, Google, uh, Nvidia, such sort. And moving right along, 
will be a little bit about Meraflis design. So the company itself was founded in 2003 and it is based in USA. This company, the Meraflis design has got different development and support centers in multiple locations in US, India, China, Korea, and Czech Republic. Now we have got the, the images shown here are some of the products which has been designed using our tool. Our tool here is the Visual Sim. So the Visual Sim is used for its modeling and simulation software. So why all these customers use our tool is because like we provide them with an extensive library. So what it means is we'll be having a lot of custom IP blocks which the user can just use it and integrate it in their models. They won't have to build anything from the scratch. Instead, we will be providing them with all the IP models. Now, right here, what we have is a default diagram for AI or ML processing. So on the left hand side, we have got multiple host devices. Um, so the CPUs, the fighter jets, the laptops, all will be sending in data. So when like we are having a three stage designing. So we can decide like if the customer wants to design the host side, then they can decide on how the sensor input should be. What is the data rate of input generated from the host side? So what are the, uh, so according to the requirement, we can define the use cases. So under requirement, what we can design on the host side will be the response time. So the host side of the designing can be pretty much controlled. So if you are designing it for a certain application or like certain purpose, then we can design the whole site accordingly. Now, the whole site only makes up for one third of the total flow. And then after the data has been generated from the whole site, it has to be sent to its destination via network. So that is where most of the problems come in. So over the network, we are having very lim limited control. So in, if you're thinking about an ideal situation, we'll be having ideally no bottleneck here, but that is not the case. If it was an ideal situation, then we won't be, we, there won't be any need to worry or like there won't be any surprises at all. But reality is not, the, not that kind. So what happens here is when we are sending the data over to the network, there will be contention of the resources. So we will have to calculate uh, also for some, some applications will have to make sure some amount of throughput can be achieved through within the network so those are some of the things that we have to uh, be considered while sending over while designing a right tool and then once the processing uh, once the data flows across the network it is going into the data center so in the data center that's where the major processing is going to take place so our, so in the data center, the user can, so according to the application, they can design the processing, storage, and communication requirements. So when, so what happens in the data center will be, there will be a VMware, so which is like the top layer. So whenever the data comes in, that layer is gonna say, okay, what the incoming data has to go to this server and take the data, and when it comes back, it has to go to another server and do the processing over there. So everything is being controlled by the top layer. So according to what the customer wants, we can actually design the data center accordingly. So if uh, you want, if the customer wants um, about five, 512 TPU ports and um, 128 CPU processing to be taken place, then we can design accordingly. And according to the input traffic, the software combinations can be designed accordingly. So what it means is that, uh, let's say for the TPU, it will be having six applications which are run on the non-linear applications. So those those can be uh, um, the CNN MLPs and uh, the recursive neural network applications. So each one of them are like non-linear applications. So for the input which is coming into the data and center, Celex um, determines what type of software combinations each of the input has to be sent through. And another consideration which we have to take here is the power and processing capacity of the data center. 
So uh, some of the application, so some of the data center or some of the tools that we are designing will be having power restrictions or like the, whether the peak power should be within certain limits or the power processing capacity should be this much. So all those we have to be pretty accurate about when, when we are designing the tool. So now we are now we are gonna look at a model which has been implemented in the visual scene. So we are gonna go through this model briefly and go through what is gonna happen here. So right over here, this is a model of a worker with an autonomous driving system. So right over here, you can see the results which have been plotted. Uh, the over here, like we are having the text display which gives the maximum latency um, statistics and things like that. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to take you to the tool right over. Yeah, so right over here, this is our tool, we should see. And here we are having, what we have here is the ATAS model. So what happens here is the model has ATAS blocks and some independent tasks running here. So what like the independent task in the sense, the engine, the EPS, the brake, the body, and other functions. So what we have over here, we are having a bunch of sensor nodes and it is gonna write, the sensor is gonna generate the traffic and then it is gonna write it to the memory which is being allocated to each of the nodes. So each of these sensors is having unique data rates. So which can be accessed from the database which you have provided over here. So if you just look, this is a brief introduction to the tool. So this is one of the models that has been Descend over here. So over here that we can see that like we are having multiple senses over here and each of the senses has been designed with different tasks. So and then the data size, the node, the value and the rate has been transferred over here. So when each of the senses are getting triggered, it is it is going to go over to the specified node and write it to the memory. So over here we are here we are having a behavior flow where the data is going to trigger an ADS function. So what happens over here is that the ADS function is going to request for a sensor data. So when that happens, when the request is sent to the required node over here, the transfer nodes will be EPS and ADS. So when it is being sent to one of the nodes, it is going to have to go over to the network and then win the arbitration and then go over to the memory and get the data and come back for the next process to happen. So, and then once this has been done, it has been sent to ADS function two and ADS function three. And if you look over here, this ADS function three requires the data from this function two and function three. So this is a dependent task over here. So if I'm gonna run the model, we can see how it is gonna come up here. So this one over here, this is the power plot. It is um, plotting it for each, uh, whenever each packet goes through. And here we are having the latency for the ADS function one, two, and three. And then for the EPS function, for the engine function, brake, body, and other functions. And these are some of the statics field which are gonna get uh, filled up once the simulation has been run over. So, this is gonna like it is gonna be done within a minute or so. So if you look over here, this, at the end of the simulation, what we can get is a similar kind of a result. So we'll be having the power plot over like similar power plot, and then the latency, as you can see, um, it goes over the peak, and then at certain instance, we are getting a minimal value around um, 60 milliseconds. Now um, let me just go back and see uh, how it, whether it got completed and then, yeah. okay let me just check the which is still running there and now if I look through the 
demo okay the latency break function of so it is still running through but the important thing here is like we can we are making three types of analysis over here one will be the speed requirements and then one will be the failure analysis and the processing requirements so one of the key features of the visual sim is that we can make failure analysis like if what happens if one of the links or nodes break so there will be an additional latency increase since the one of the nodes failed so we over here what we does is like um, we are removing one of the links during the run so that when the data is being sent over there won't be any node over there so that result that results in increasing the latency and another thing that we can do over here is change the number of processing units available so if i am going to decrease the processing units over here and run it again then i am going to see an increase in the latency so now let uh, let it run for a while because um, let it run in the background now we are going to both go along with this so uh, we will come back to the statistics at the later time so now what we are going here is the emerging technologies what so what is the future and what is going to happen like uh, why what is the need for, like whether we should be investing in those technologies and things like that so the first one is the implementation of matrix multiplication sequence for an ai processor So, so why the need for an AI specific processor? So the fast growing computational demands for neural networks that could require, that required Google to actually double the number of data centers they operate on. So when that became necessary, so what they did was like at that point in time, they were using the CPUs and GPUs for their operation. So um, what actually the cpu and gpus were having was they're like a general purpose unit so like they can be coupled with uh, multiple applications like uh, for word processing for like rocket launchers and things like that both cpus and gpus are pretty generic so they they use the cpus and gpus have used where the caches or out of order execution multi-threading multi-processing prefetching all that are done they're pretty generic but it can be also used for AI, DNN, or machine learning, but they are not specifically built for those purposes. They can be all, they can be used for AI processing, but they are not built specifically for that. So, but the TensorFlow framework uses the production neural network applications like MLP, CNN, and LSTMs. So, like the multi-layer perceptrons, convolutional neural networks, and recurrent neural networks. So. For the CPUs, the CPU is pretty flexible. That the hardware doesn't always know what would the next calculation be until it reads the next instruction. So the CPU has to store the calculations, calculation results on the memory inside the CPU, that is the L1 cache or the registers for every calculation made. So if you are dealing with a matrix application, matrix multiplication addition, it will be a extensive extensive calculations will be taking place so each time after a calculation has been made if you are using a cpu it has to go to the memory and store the result so it is it is pretty costly by doing that it takes a lot of time and the throughput will be very low so what can be done so then came the gpus and gp so how does the gpus work so the gpus went for pretty simple strategy for example what they did was why not have thousands of alus instead of single processor so in a so currently in a, a, in a, um, a modern gpu is having around 2500 to 500 five, 2500 to 5000 alus in a single processor so what it does is like a, model, a massive parallelism is being taken place there so even though it does the same thing as the GPU, but now it is having more than 2,500 or 3,000 ALUs. So the throughput has been increased heavily, but it doesn't change the fact that both of them are run on based of von Neumann architecture. So still the von Neumann bottleneck is there. Uh, that means like it still have to 
access the memory every so often when the result has been updated. So then, the, so then they came up with an idea to implement something which is application specific, which is specific to the AI processing alone. So when the Google designed the tensor for processing unit, they designed it solely for matrix multiplication and addition, which is going to result the operations to be over in a pretty fast rate with less power required with while using less power and instead of smaller footprint. So now we are going to. So that is the purpose behind the implementing a specific processing unit. Now we are going to look over the hardware accelerators versus processes and FPGA. So in certain applications, the use of might require hardware accelerators or processes or FPGAs. And you might not know which one might be better suited for the application. So we, so we, what we can do uh, when creating a virtual prototype is connect them in different test cases and see how the results are going to vary. And so the challenges in the, the challenges that we are going to face here are two, two types, the exterior factors and the interior factors. So the exterior fact factors in the sense will be the memory access, the sensor input and the connected devices. So the how much uh, requests are going to come in to the you come in and the, what will be the sensor rate data rate and what will be the connected devices like are we connecting it to an FPGA are we connecting it to the processor and accordingly the the process is going to vary and the interior factors here are, are the processing requirements and the connectivity between the subsystems which has been defined within and software most important the art of isolation the metrics that we are going to discuss over here are the response times the power consumptions and the throughput and the certifications so in certain applications the user might give value to the response times like if you take an example for image recognition or voice recognition it the response time comes out at most importance there because what we need is a pretty fast response we don't want the user to wait for few minutes to get the the result and if you so and then for certain applications we need to have a power check for like let's say if you are designing a mobile device so the mobile de de devices will be running on batteries so we will be having very less amount of power to deal with so we have to in those applications we will have a power check or power restraint which we have to make sure we are not going above and these are some of the basic definitions. So the architecture exploration, which we are going to be talking on over here using the visual same will be about designing some designing the model which optimizes system specifications to match the requirements. On the right hand side, you can see a model which has been designed using the visual same. Over there, the specifications will be on processing processor speed topology and arbitration and the requirement will be on the timing and the energy and cost so as we vary the certain parameters like the processing speed and topology and the arbitration we can see how the results are going to vary and accordingly we can do three types of analysis the performance analysis the power measurement and the functional correctness so in performance analysis what we are going to go over is the buffer size the utilization the throughput and the response times so the response time in the sense how how long it does it took to complete each task what was the throughput of it the net of throughput and things like that and the power measurement will be going over the power plot calculated and seeing where where all we, did we get the peak is that can we how how can we um, normalize the peak values and make it pretty much efficient and the functional correctness deals with the task scheduling such that there a certain reliability can be achieved so now about visual sync so in this tool like the system the visual sync tool is used for system architecture exploration it is being split into three sections like the architecture exploration will be done on the hardware part the software and the network and the analysis will be done on for domains the performance analysis power exploration failure analysis and the functional analysis over here what we are got is 
the library, an extensive library supported by the visual scene. So we, uh, from the left to the right, it goes over from stochastic to a cycle accurate library blocks. So this is one of the main reasons why a large number of customers use visual scene. All they have to do is use these libraries and integrate it to their designs. So these are some of the design challenges that we might face while designing a tool, designing a model. So now over here, what we have got here is a C two CPU cores, an I/O, a DSP, two buses, and a bridge to interconnect them. So now I'm having an application which uses the I/O to send over to the CPU one and then to the DSP, and the result gets back to the I/O via the buses. So this is a pretty simple task. Not much of a connection is there. So now I add another application which is going to run on the same network. So now there is a lot of contention. So how is this going to affect? So over here we are having the response time analysis over here. So what we can expect, what we are plotting over here is the response time for the two best speeds. So one of them is having uh, 200, 200 megahertz and one is 400 megahertz. So we expect the slower one to get higher latency all the time, but that is not the case. Over here, we are having some circle bubbled places where the faster bus is taking up a higher latency, higher response time than the slower bus. So these are some things that we might not expect during the designing, but you will be accounted for what if you are having a virtual prototype built using virtual scene. So that we can, so after, after implementing the design and running it through, we'll be a, there won't be any surprises left after the fabrication has been done. Now, another design challenges will be the impact of data center architecture. So, the schedule task should the software task scheduling accounts to very much high importance because one of the key things will be the reliability. So, in certain applications, there should be a deadline before which a certain task has to be completed. So if you take uh, autonomous driving, the moment it we press the brake pedal, the vehicle has to be stopped within a few milliseconds. If the braking is not being done within a few milliseconds, then a collision is going to take place. So in those applications, we have to make sure we are maintaining that deadline requirement. And if we are not, then we, we should provide the user with certain parameters which they can vary it and make make the latency bring down within acceptable rates. So why system level simulation? So when the Google came up with an idea for designing an application specific um, AI processor, they built the TPU in 2015. And they, a few years later, like um, on 2016, on the next year, uh, 2016, they decided to write an article on the TPU and compared with NVIDIA chipset. Now, what they did was at this time, at the time of publishing, the NVIDIA had a Pascal P40, which was much faster, but they decided to compare it with the server K80, which was released in 2019 using the architecture design in 2009. So when the article came out, everyone was all like pretty much hyped because like, it was pretty unheard of. The statistics were insane. So that is why the system, that is where the system level simulation comes in. So if the user or customer wants to make sure what the stats given out by the vendors are accurate, then you can build a model in Visual Sim and then compare the results. So what are the considerations that we have to take place what, uh, make sure while implementing a virtual prototype in Visual Sim? One will be to obtain accurate timing details. So what it means is since we're going to make a virtual prototype, everything should be accurate since because this virtual prototype is what is going to like what is going to determine how your actual hardware is going to be fabricated. So that is one of the major requirements will, will be to obtain the accurate timing details. Another requirement will be to implement the pipeline accurately. So what it means is how the
the task is going to fall through. So in uh, AI or ML or DNN applications, we'll be having a bunch of nonlinear applications which has to be sent through. So according to uh, data coming in, the applications which it has to run through will be varying differently. So we have to get that implemented pretty much accurately so that we'll be the statistics provided from the tool will be accurate in that level as well. And another consideration will be to use the massive library provided within the visual scene. So now we are going to discuss some of the models which has been implemented using the visual scene. So the first one will be the network level model where the host is going to send the data over to the data center. So now we have the results are being plotted. Results are shown here as well. So now I'm going to take you to the model where I can show you with much clarity. I'm going to so this this over here is the model and this over here is the host side. So here we are having five devices which are generating the traffic and send it over to the network over here and then over to the data center. So what is going to happen over here or at each device is that it is having the power calculation done over here, the sensors feeding in data, and over here we are having the processing units. If I'm going to go over here, you can see the processing units, the buzzers, the memories, the DMAs, or descend over here. So now, after the processing has been done, it has been sent over to the Bluetooth connectivity core, and then to the radio transceiver, it is going to go out to the network. So once it reaches the network, it is going to look up and see where it should be sent to. And once it finds the destination field, it has been sent, uh, the data which has to be sent to the data center is going to go over to the network and then reach the data center. So if you look at here, the parameters specified over here are the number of chip, chips per port for the TPU and chips per port for the CPU and the evaluation time as well. So now if I want to run over here, we can see, I will get, I will give you a bit of time to analyze this model over here. So you can see here, uh, the devices are, each of the devices are plotting the power. Um, over here, we are having the network plus data center latency over here. And you can see here, one of the, this, this one has a bit of failure analysis as well. Over here, one of the link breaks. So there is no plotting for until, until the link comes back up again. So it is, so you can see here, we have a contention over here over here and then once the link comes back up you can see how it changes the plot and over here the plot is being here we are having the latency plotter as well and then over here we are having the activity plotter and here we are calculating calculating the MIPS for the processing units as well so now um, I'm going to stop the simulation and run it on let's say what happens if the evaluation time increases? So now why I'm gonna run this again and so earlier we got a peak of uh, five milliseconds. Now now you can see here, now it's a bit different. See here, now the plot is pretty much different from what we got previously. Previously, we got a graph similar to this one right over here. Now we are having a different plot over here. So according to the parameters which we specify, the result that is being generated is going to vary accordingly. So as a customer, you just have to go over the parameters which are specified and then you can see the large change which is going to take place, which is pretty sweet. And now we are going to go over and the model which has been designed in the visual scene itself, which will be the X86 based on a processing. So now I'm going to take you over to the tool itself right away. I'm going to close 
the previous windows yeah so over here what we have here is we are having a traffic generation block which is going to send in the traffic and then we are over here which we are going to read the trace file and after reading the trace file we are going to decide to which of the processor course we have to send the data to so after receiving the data the processor is going to do the the processing on the data which came in and do implement the pipeline so now over here we are having a positive pipeline and we are having i cache l cache i cache d cache and there are two caches and now then we are having the network over here and the data will be sent over the network and go to the memory and then comes back and completes the processing and then send it over on this port so after we get after we finishes the processing it is been sent over and this instruction done port so if we run the model you can see the latency of the processors the latent the utilization plots the latency of processor one um, over here we are having the statistics uh, which will be saying about the utilization then the i1 cache utilization l2 cache utilization the register utilization how much utilization did the as the memory took uh, a detailed analysis will be made from this tool and you can see over here like uh, there are some peaks which we are getting and we can make analysis on how to go so here like we got, we started off the uh, the processing with a bit less of peaks let less latency but as we progress we started getting some spikes along the way so uh, we can so when when we get the first set of results then what we can do is like we can go over the network and then change some of the parameter values so le let's go over here and change the bus speed over here let's say what happens if i am going to say my bus speed is just 300 megahertz so now if i am going to run it again let's see how it goes Now the processor, the processor peak values are above six microseconds, which has increased because now the bus structure is not that fast enough as previous case. So uh, similarly, you can just go along and um, after designing a prototype, see over here, we are getting a message saying it is taking the, there's a cache miss happened. So since the network which we are designed over here is slow, slow, pretty slow that the instruction which has been sent through the network is not coming back within the design constraints. So our tool has been designed pretty much accurately to give you certain messages like this whenever something is wrong with your design. Now we are going on to the next model, which will be ARM based SOC. So right over here i'm going to take you to the tool right along i'm going to close the other windows that has been opened here and then i'm going to take you over here so over here what we are having is we are having a network we are having the dat, uh, data generated from the sensors and then we are having a processor we are having a dma um, axis traffic generator and then we are having uh, two um, arm clusters over here so why the purpose of this model is to see we are providing the network with large chunks of data and so there will be large contention of resources for going through this set of memories provided over here so what happens now is like everything every data which will be sent over here will have to go through this network and reach and access these memories and we are having a display port over here as well so if we run the simulation over here we can see the different latencies the throughput and other statistics which can be generated from this model
see over here what you can see here is the latency ports so for each of the processor core processor processor instances we are plotting the latency how it, what value is it going to take so we are going we are getting a peak value for around um, 0.553 microseconds over here so these are some of the statistics which can be obtained by designing the tool and you can actually go over like um, so if you want slightly better latency then you can decide like you can vary the parameters which were over here so what you can do is like double for the parameter and enter the new value and then the whole model is going to run according to this value given over here and this is the power table which is going to help us plot the power values now what we have over here is an fpga so this one implements this model implements silings sync ultra scale plus and bisoc model so the purpose of this model was to send the data across two fpgas so what we do here is we send the data from one fpga to another through the ethernet port so uh, we are having a bunch of interfaces like i2c can do what USB 3.0 is sending in the data to the FPGA and there is a network provided inside and through the network it is going to go to the memory and write it and once it has been written it is going to trigger the processor unit and then it is going to do the processing on the data and after it has been done there is a flow which has been designed over here so the flow defined over here says that first the traffic is the sensor is, or sensor of the traffic is going to feed the interrupt unit and it interrupts one of the processor cores and then goes to the PL, then to the on chip memory and to the DRAM. And once it has been done, it is going to go to the PL2 and turn to the DRAM2, which is over here. And then once the old flow has been completed, we are going to plot the latency for this old flow. So if I am going to go over there, uh, let me just, yeah, this one. So if I double click here, you can see we can select the um, type of operation defined for the real processing unit it can be split mode or lockstep mode so all the customer have to use do is click here and select the mode of operation that the customer decides to pretty which so the model which has been designed over here has been the model that we design on the visual sync will be built to simplicity so that the user won't have to go over much difficulty configuring them and now let me just run it real quick. So over here we are having the PL hub. What it means is like it is having a multiple PLs within, and each of the PLs within will be sent across the PL according to what type of transfer they need. If they need a transfer through high speed low latency port, they 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 will be sent through this one. You can see here. The name of the port high speed and if they 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 don't require the high speed then they can be sent on the moderate speed and some of them which are low latency requirement traffic can be sent through the low speed port as well so now over here the calculations which are done over here will be the latency plots and then this is for the a53 and then over here we are having the latency plots for the first FPGA and then for the second FPGA as well. So each of the processor cores, you can see some of them have having higher latencies. Some of them are get started getting a tip in there. Some of them is going to keep on rising and uh, things like that. So after designing, after implementing the model, you can make accurate analysis on them as well. Now I'm gonna close the, some of the windows over here. Yeah. Now I'm going to go back to the presentation. Oh, moving right along, now we'll be going along uh, one of the GPU models which has been built in Visual Sync. So what happens over there is here we are having a GPU unit built here. So what happens is the traffic is going to come and then we are having a warp scheduler over here. So we'll be having a sequence of things for which the data has to be processed on. So uh, after each sequence has been uh, so when start processing on each of the sequences, it has been 
it sends a massive parallelism is being present here. So a lot of sequence will be done done on parallel, so it will be sent over to the memory which is inserted over here. So once it comes and finishes and comes back, it is going to trigger the next class and keeps on going. And after it finishes, we are going to get. So what we are doing over here, we are calculating the power and the array latency as well. Over here, you can see here the power keeps on increasing. So the instantaneous power which is going to keep on increasing. As a result, the average is also going to keep on rising. So now over here, as the instance keeps on dropping by, the average also starts to drop by. So we are having a, a peak value around 7 watts over here. So now um, it, it, a massive parallelism is being taken place here. So a lot of calculation is being done here. So now over here, what we can see here is um, let, it, let, let, let it be uh, given a few seconds. Um, so yeah, as you can see here, the RL latency which is being coming over here, you can see here how the latency port is, is um, being calculated over here. And um, as the as we keep on going, you can see how the port is varying, how the latency is being calculated. So by the end of the simulation, you'll be getting the results uh, similar as this one. So we can see here the it is getting a maximum peak of around 14, 15 microseconds. So this one over here is the TPU version one. So this one when built on Visual Sim is having um, accurate implementation. So what it means is that we are having a host which is being sent the request over to the TPU. And in the TPU, what we have over here is the PCI interface, and then it is being sent, the, the, weight, the weight data which is being coming in will be sent to the external memory counted over here. And once the weight has been filled up over here, when it's time to um, start the processing on the data, even before that, the weight will be loaded into the FIFO over here. So once the weight and the data has been loaded into the FIFO and the unified buffer accordingly, then we will begin the matrix multiplication. And over here, we'll be getting the data from both the FIFO and the unified buffer, and we will do the matrix, matrix multiplication. And, so, and the summation will be taking place over the accumulator, and then after both of them have been done, it will be sent over to the activation where nonlinear applications will be sent through and then after the result has been done, we'll be updating it with the unified buffer. So this is what happens in the TPU, which has been sent over here. And if you run it over here, you can see here, this is the latency for the MXE unit, and this is the latency for the older network. So um, after the simulation, we are going to get a result looking similar to this. So at the, at the beginning, we got pretty um, stable latency value, but as the time progress, we got a latency peak around uh, 219 microseconds. So by making a virtual prototype, we are able to um, account for the surprises that you might get at the end of the fabrication. So now we are, what we have now here is the Tensor V3, which has been implemented in the cloud. So in the TPU V3 or the port units, which has been implemented uh, released in the latest version of uh, lat latest, uh, they are using matrix multiplication units inside the TP ports. So what what it means is that um, we are gonna have yeah, we are having a large um, amount of transfer operations which is um, being done at a parallel amount. So what it does here is uh, we are doing multiplication on that large case uh, whenever we get a data from the network. So what happens here is this is the power plot. So you can see at at, at a time till here at um, one millisecond, we are having a constant power peak around 400 watts. Now you can see here, like um, let's give it a bit of time. It is doing the matrix multiplication, which has been, um, which is going to take a large amount of resource time. So um, after the multiplication has been done, we are going to get the result value over here. So um, let, it, let it run for a few seconds. And yeah, yeah, over here, you can see there is a peak over here. So at this time, around 1.123 milliseconds, we got the first multiplication done. So around that time, since it takes a lot of 
uh, power consuming calculating those results it is using a lot lo large enough amount of resources we are getting a peak in the power, power amount so that's why we are getting a peak over here so we are getting a peak at that um, at the instances when the matrix multiplication is being done so now this is the uh, basic visualization design flow so what it so what when designing a model what we have to do what we have to come up with is an earlier architecture analysis so we have to come up with what are the requirements of the model that you are trying to implement and um, how you should be uh, and what are the uh, how you should be how you want to achieve those requirements so the size and uh, the arbitration requirements the topology design those are the next things uh, after you have designed decided on what are the requirements so once you have uh, once you have a clear cut understanding on what you need and what are the topology and the design then you have to compare the result between the development and the architecture model so by comparing you will get like an idea on what needs to be done on what changes have you have to make and another thing that you have to do is you have to do the testing and the verification so once you have the virtual prototype model done what you have to do is you have to provide a lot of design a lot of use cases where you can actually make the system fail so when the virtual prototype design fails you can see the, you can uh, make a record of the cases where the design might actually fail and then you can make provisions for make accounts for the cases so that you won't have to get surprised when implementing when fabricating the real product so um, over here we are design, design discussing the energy and sharing benefits over using system level modeling so if you are going by the traditional um, analysis it is going to take around 18 months to implement the whole process done so the model creation alone will take six months then the analysis alone is going to take 1.5 months and the communication after and the refinement is going to take another six months so it is going to come up to all of six months over here so if we are using a system level model level simulation then we are getting the model creation done within one month and then the analysis will be done within 2.5 months and the communication will be done within four months so that means we are getting we are saving a lot of money and the time at the same time so that's it for the today's webinar and if you guys are having any doubts or if you're having any anything to go over again you can just use the chat window provided on the left hand side right hand side and ask any questions right away